Okay, he, here's my wheel. It's the treadle wheel. And you can tell it's not framed up in hardwood, it's framed up in pine, and I've painted it, because pine is not the prettiest wood sometimes. We'll start with the box here. This is just pine. It's like a one by six, I think. It's just extra wood I had. I made like a little shelf that sits right here. Um, I just screwed these together. I mean, I, there's no fancy joinery. Maybe the fanciest thing is the angle of the cut. I mean, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's really not hard. And you don't even have to cut these flush. I mean, they could just come out to here and it'd be a little bit, maybe proud, but that's all right. Um, these looks like I cut at an angle here. You just have to figure it out with like a protractor. The, once you start getting into the project, you'll understand how it works out. Now my wheel came with a wheel head that just kind of goes on. So it's just pressure. It sits on by pressure, um, which is nice. But I, the one I made that was all maple, that was fancy, just had a regular Brent wheel with a little set screw that you just screw tight into the, the shaft. So that's possible too. And then this doesn't have to be this high. I don't know who's flooding their treadle wheels with this much water. That's a ton of water. This is just some pipe stuff. Um, you don't have to use that. You, you could use PVC if you wanted. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to get around that one. Um, this is my coffee. So this here is not even attached. I mean, you can see it wiggles and it does not stay because you press, when you're pressing the treadle bar, you can hear that just slight pressure even lifts this side up. So how you alleviate that as you can see these holes here, I just had some of these on there. These are just cheap shelf brackets. And when you screw them into your box and your thing down here, this one is fine. This one doesn't move. But on my other one, I just screw it in and then it cinches everything down real nice so it doesn't move. This is not, this is probably the hardest part to make by yourself, but it's not that hard. You can do it. All right, what else? The seat uh, is just a very slight incline. It's not super, it's not a big deal. This is just plywood, yeah, plywood. Uh, I did make a little bit of a area here for the box to kind of sit in. That's optional. I mean, you don't, this is all specialized kind of stuff you don't have to do. Um, I anchored my seat down here. Some people anchor them down here. You can do both, you can do one or the other. You just have to see what works. You kind of just have to build the thing and then you'll know how to fix it if it breaks. And it, it probably won't break, but it's not as hard as you think. It just looks more complicated because it's a new thing and it's in a triangular structure. <clears throat> okay. My son is playing down here right now too. He's, I'm a stay home dad. So, all right. So this is just pine two by fours uh, or construction lumber. This is nothing fancy. Uh, you can tell the holes I didn't really care a whole lot about. I drilled straight through with a, I don't know what size that is, but you kind of figured out. You don't want it too big. You want some beef in the structure still, but you also want to be able to lock these down. This goes on this side. And these fancy looking holes really aren't that fancy. It's the same kind of drill bit that I'm using here called a Forstner bit. And you can make little uh jigs if you want that kind of sit so you can drill straight or you do what i did is just kind of go in straight and then curve it and then keep going this does not have to be fancy or hard i just kind of forced what i wanted to happen to happen you can go as fancy as you want with expensive hardwoods or you can go as cheap as you want with just Regular pine and pine works. Even my drive shaft. I mean, this is made out of cheap two by two pine. I mean, it's just cheap stuff. This here is just a playground uh, swing, part of a swing set swing, and it actually works really well. Then I don't have to use leather. Uh, this is just a big bolt, and it goes all the way through. 
here. And the piece that connects here, inside here, is just, it's like a, a closed circle that fit on this bolt. I think it was some sort of fence, um, fence door hinge or something like that. It's not fancy hardware. I found all this stuff at a cheap, you know, like a big box hardware store that we have in Minnesota. They're called Menards. I mean, the Home Depot Menards. I don't know what you have in England, but um, this structure is a little bit more complicated. This was handmade by somebody, but your welder will be able to do the same thing. You have a, a solid bar going all the way through, and then you add these, these pieces here and on the bottom. And again, this is way fan this is way fancier of a piece than that I've ever seen. I've never seen this before. But so I didn't make this piece. And then you add this piece and weld this while this bar is all the way through, and then you just cut the bar out when it's all welded together and you're good to go. This has been this again another fancy piece, but like it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a hinge. I've seen people use a hinge before. This one was a custom welded piece. I have no idea how they drilled. This is insane to drill through this thick of steel. I don't know why they, why not just drill some holes that you can, it's way easier just to drill a few holes. Uh, again, this is just a fence hardware piece, I think. And a, a, like a fence, um, a fence door hinge. This stuff, there's no bearing in here. This is just metal on metal. It's not fancy. Um, yeah, you kind of just make do with what you got and you figure out ways to do it by just drawing it out a bunch of times and going to your hardware store and going, okay, what do I got? Here's an example of the piece. So this is like half inch thick maybe, or I don't know what, you know, pretty thick. Uh, steel and steel, steel plate. And you can see how they made this piece and cut and, and put that piece in there and then cut this piece out later. And this, if you want, I mean, you can go all the way up here. I mean, your drive shaft doesn't have to be this small. It can go higher, which would, you know, possibly enable this to raise up a lot, but you have this part to look out for. So make sure you make your wheel custom to how tall you are. What else can I tell you about it? Oh, the bearings. That was the most confusing part for me. Is this easy to get off? Probably not. Yeah, maybe it is. Okay, so I just unhooked. And this is just this is just from that swing I was talking about. This is the, the chain from the swing. This is just an eye bolt that goes all the way through. This is just a general hook. Maybe I'll try doing this. I added these pieces on the bottom of my box here, just so that they would it would not wiggle wobble a lot, but it still wobbled. And so I still had to add those pieces here. I wouldn't have had to add those if I just had the pieces here. So you just kind of make do, you know, you, you go, oh, I need this to be fixed. And then you fix it. Daddy. Yeah, bud. Daddy. Okay, this is the bearing. I think it's called a flange bearing, but it's only a two hole. Sometimes they have a full block flange bearing. You don't need that. You, this is fine. I got this off Amazon very cheaply. It was a two pack for like 15 bucks or something shipped. I mean, it was nothing. And it's the same thing here as it is on the underside. There, you can see it. And I even had to kind of, when I made my wheel, take some of the material out for this to fit. You could, um, the bearing there, you could sink it down a little bit into this this frame part, but I wanted my frame to be really strong, so I didn't know if that would compromise the integrity at all. Um, there's nothing holding this whole heavy wheel up except this tiny set screw on this bearing and the bottom bearing. That confused me like crazy. I thought I had to have a thrust bearing on the bottom holding all the weight. Nah, you don't. This works fine. Everybody, other, every other treadle wheel I've seen, treadle wheel I've seen does the same setup with just two bearings. There's nothing holding the piece up besides those set screws. It's actually amazing that it can hold all that weight, but most of the weight is going around and around, so it seems to be fine. This is not super heavy. This is maybe maybe 40 to 50 pounds, and this is this is a full two foot. 
Okay, this flywheel was made out of one sheet of four foot by eight foot plywood that was, I think, three quarter inch. And I just, I have a table saw, which is really helpful in this. Um, you don't have to have a table saw, but to make a nice, you know, even looking wheel, that's what I used. I've seen people use two by fours lined up this way and kind of going across and they glue them all and then th and they press them together. I can't really, like this, if you can imagine a big square block. And then from there, they take a band saw and cut out their circle. That could work. Um, there are lots of videos on YouTube for making a table saw jig. If you have a table saw for cutting out circles, it's really easy. It's a really simple jig. Um, yeah, and this is what, one, two, three, four, five pieces of plywood, three quarter inch plywood, I think, to make this. Uh, it's a, and it's a good, it's a good weight. It works really well. Um, you don't want it too heavy and you don't want it too light. So 40 to 50 pounds is about right. I don't think these are whole pieces inside. I think the top one is whole and the bottom one is whole. You could make this instead of two foot, four inches, you could make this just under two feet per piece with a full plywood. And it's way easier to get, you can get eight circles out of plywood then because well, at least in, in the US because they make them four foot by eight foot. This is an odd size for plywood and you have to be really creative how you cut your circles out. And there's gonna be like a piece that's very strange. And that these are these are like half, like quarter circles and half circles all spaced around. So there's gaps inside here that you don't see because of the top piece and the bottom piece kind of sandwich it all together. But yeah, and I just glued these up and probably screwed them too. Um, the basic frame has three large pieces that are like a four by four size. I think if it's hardwood, they say three by three, that's fine. But if you're using pine in the US, we just have these four by four Douglas fir pine posts that are really solid. I did not make this actual, this, this frame part here. Somebody else gave this to me and it was super ugly. I think it was made out of cedar, which don't use cedar, cedar's too soft. Use like quality pine, like Douglas fir. So they they glued a bunch of pieces together. If you can do solid pieces, gluing up is just a pain. I don't know why you choose to glue up. That seems silly unless you have to have unless you have to, like I did with that other build you saw. These are the other big pieces, these crossbar pieces. So you have one, two, three major frame legs. Then you have one, two. Um, three, four, I think. One, two, three, four, yep. Four other major frame pieces that connect the three legs, like a teeth. So one, two, and then on the bottom, three, four. And then the rest are just two by fours to kind of solidify it. Buy a cheap set of chisels. You probably won't even have to sharpen them if you're just cutting into pine. What you do is you drill a hole, a circle, like a, from a Forstner bit, the size you want, and then you just take your chisel and you just square out one part of that hole that you want the, um, the washer to seat flat on. And it's not perfect. I mean, it's jagged in there. So you just do the best you can. And all these angles and stuff, I mean, I was, I was winging it. Every single hole is different. I mean, look at... I'm winging it every time. And these two here are a little tricky because there's, you don't want them, they can't be at the same spot, so they have to be slightly offset. Otherwise, they these bolts would hit each other inside here. So, is it hard? Yes. Is it also not that complicated? Yeah, it's not that complicated. It's doable. It is a big project, but you can do it. Anybody can do this. It's just confusing because you see the whole product and it's not broken down very easily for people to understand. But just do what works for you. You can do it. Uh, using pine is a lot cheaper than hardwood. Yeah, good luck. Oh, I'll show you. Here's my other wheel. This one is made out of hardwood. This was a Jeff A-Strike. He's a potter that worked at the Leach Pottery for a little while and then moved to Minnesota. This is what I was talking about. People glue up their flywheels differently. This still has layers though. These are just cross layers. 
This has the fancy joinery. Very pretty. Unnecessary. It also has these top locks. These are only on there because this has a uh, copper insert. You have to know how to solder if you want to use copper, and copper is extremely expensive. I think just using some polyurethane and wood works great. Just do like, or even house paint, outdoor house paint. That's what I used on this other one here. And I think I, I coated it in poly after that. But yeah, just do some layers and make sure it's cured up before you use it. So wait a good, you know, good while before you actually use it. But this is a lot of extra work. And then you got to add these extra pieces to kind of seat the copper down. I don't know. It's up to you. It's a nice wheel, but I think that one throws just as nice as this one. They both throw a little differently. That one's definitely more comfortable. This one's not as comfortable. This seat is padded and it's got a nice leather piece on there, but like these corners here, they hurt. If I throw in the wrong kind of stance for a little while, I, I can get bruises on, on my bottom. This one has kind of more of a tractor a tractor seat is a little wider and then it, it goes skinnier and I just I just grabbed some extra material I had and and some foam and put it on top it's real comfortable and I'm a big guy and this this holds me I'm 220 so this this holds me just fine you can see maybe a little bit uh, I don't know if you can see that but the frame the frame does move a little bit when you work on these things so I haven't used one that hasn't moved they all move a little bit and some move more than others. There we go. Oh, you can see here how that, I guess I did put it down in a few places. So there, goes over there. It's not a perfect fit. Kind of showing you all my, I'm airing all my dirty laundry on this build here, but Learn from it so it's easy, you know, make it easy on yourself. Um, anything else? To make this piece here, which of course, this looks horrible. Uh, let's see. Okay. To make this piece here, um, it, this piece was much longer and I just drilled a hole where I wanted it and then I cut after I drilled the hole to make this kind of half bar piece. It's really easy. Um, this barely doesn't touch so you have to cut kind of a notch in the wood and this here, oops come on now, this is a bearing, no a, a shaft collar that was kind of welded on there before the welding was done. And that can be raised or lowered so that this seats where you want it. Granted, this can only go so high before it touches, before it smacks into here. So you can only go so high and low on these things. Usually one height is good enough, but I had some women from my wife's work over to throw on these and they had a hard time reaching even the highest part of the pedal. So. You may want to shorten your, well, there's different ways actually. You can, I've seen people add a block, like a custom block that just kind of slides on here. And then that rate, you can raise it up quite a bit, you know, and then you've got an extra block or you can make it bigger this way. So it slides on and then you have a lot easier time, you know, instead of way down here, it can, it could be way up here. So you can make it the same way that the book says to, because that's probably a little easier than trying to customize it right off the bat. And then just add a custom block at the end to your foot pedal. And then you might, you could even, you know, this one doesn't have to be down here. It could be higher up if you wanted, because this is where your foot goes. Or you could make another custom block to sit here, you know, to raise the height. I hope I'm being helpful and not more confusing. You can do it. It's it seems daunting, it is a little daunting, but it's totally doable, especially you got help with a welder and you got help with a woodworker. All right, good luck. Just to show you, I planned this thing out, I mean, to a T. It's nice to get some graph paper and just, you can see, oh, mortising seven eighths inch deep on these 
mortises here if you're going to do that kind of thing so you know exactly how long of pieces of wood you need so you're not over buying on your wood because you don't want to buy a bunch of extra wood for this this project you, it's expensive um something i didn't mention heim joints that's another option for this piece here there's something called a heim joint h-e-i-m and it's kind of like a ball bearing swivel kind of thing that you can screw into stuff so mess around with that. Uh, another thing I did, I have this 24 inch diameter circle for the treadle flywheel. So I taped a bunch of papers together and I made a big circle. And then I just used that as a template for my plywood to cut out. Uh, that's one way of doing it. There's, there's the shaft. That's kind of what it can look like. And so I drew, I drew out everything multiple times. I even got all these drawings off the internet. So here's the book. I bought the Self-Reliant Potter. I got it a really good deal because when I bought it, nobody cared about this stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a cool book. There's like recipes and stuff and some cool pictures, but um, this is definitely the most important stuff. So I'll send you, is there anything on it you should know? You kind of get a good idea of what's going on here. I think I explained everything. And this probably explains things just slightly differently than I did. So everybody's got their own way of making these things. You can do a hollow flywheel, uh, whatever. You can do that if you want. I didn't care to do that. Um, yeah, this the it talks about all this stuff here, the shaft, the metal work. There's these important pictures. So I'll send this. I'll send this to you in like an email, an assembly notes. That's really helpful to have in materials. It is helpful to have the materials list, but I mean, not really when you have an idea of what it looks like, it's not that hard.